the Pied Piper. This is the story of a strange thing that happened 600 years ago in the old German town of Hamlin. Hamlin was a pleasant place. The old houses had crooked gables and leaned across the cobbled streets. The spires of churches rose high above the tiled roofs and outside the wall of the town flowed the broad, shining river. Many children lived in Hamlin and ran to and fro over the cobblestones, shouting and laughing. The little boys had rosy cheeks and the little girls had curls as fair as flax. One year, the happy town found itself troubled by a great host of rats who had travelled from nobody knew where. What was worse, nobody could think how to get rid of them. Brown rats, grey rats, black rats, solemn old rats with whiskers, frisky young rats with long tails. They ran about all over Hamlin, scratching behind walls, running pitter-patter, pitter-patter downstairs and in and out of kitchens, squeaking in their hundreds so that people could not hear themselves speak. They killed all the Hamlin cats and fought the dogs quite boldly. They were too cunning to be caught in traps. What could be done? At last the Hamlin people grew very angry and flocked to the town hall, where the mayor of Hamlin and his aldermen, dressed in their crimson gowns, sat at a long table, talking about the rats. Rats! This was all anybody could think about. Ah! shouted the Hamlin people. Why do we have a mayor and alderman? Why do we buy them crimson gowns lined with ermine? They can't even rid us of a plague of rats. And as they grew more angry, they shouted, If you don't hurry up and do something, we'll be rid of you. The fat old mayor of Hamlin scratched his head, and all the aldermen looked terribly worried. What can we do? they muttered to one another. But nobody had a single clue. And when they heard a light rap on the door of the town hall, they jumped quite nervously because they thought it was a rat scratching at the door. Tap, 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 they heard again, and the mayor, trying to look bold, called out, Come in! The door opened. Somebody came in. The mayor and his aldermen stared and stared in wonderment, their eyes big with surprise. Such a queer fellow stepped softly into the town hall. He was tall and thin, his skin dark and his hair very light. He had greeny blue eyes that glinted like the point of a new pin and little smiles played about his lips. But his coat made them stare most of all. It was very long and covered him from top to toe. Half the coat was red and the other half a gay yellow. This queer strange stranger walked up to the mayor's table and said, Please, your honours, I know a charm that will make any living creature follow me. Whether they creep or fly or run or swim, I can charm them. In my time, I have travelled to many kingdoms. They call me the Pied Piper. Still staring with all their eyes, the mayor and the corporation noticed a pipe hanging at the end of the stranger's scarf. He had a gaily striped scarf of red and yellow to match his coat. They noticed that his fingers touched his dangling pipe, as if they simply itched to play it. And before they could speak, the piper said, If I get rid of your rats, will you pay me a thousand guilders? Fifty thousand, shouted the delighted mayor and all the aldermen together. Then the piper stepped softly into the street, his eyes sparkling greeny blue, and a wise little smile curling his lips as he lifted his magic pipe. He blew three shrill notes, and at once, pitter pat, pitter pat, on the cobbled stones came the sound of the rats running and frisking and hurrying to follow the pied piper playing his sweet tune. On he walked towards the wall of the town, piping gaily as he walked, and the pattering noise grew louder until it swelled to a rumble as rats, brown and grey and black and old and young, came tumbling in hundreds and thousands out of the old gabled houses. The mayor and the alderman stood staring from the doors of the town hall. People in their doorways stared with eyes and mouths wide open in wonder. 
Still the piper walked on, playing his pipe, and still the rats followed. At last, piper and rats reached the river outside the walls, and at once the rats plunged in, never to be seen again. All except one. One stout old grey rat swam the broad river and reached the far side. Very scared, he scurried off to Ratland and told the tribe of rats who lived there the very strangest story. I heard the clear notes of a pipe, he said, and at once I could hear people opening cupboards full of jams and pickles. I could hear the people opening casks of butter and barrels of sugar. Then I heard a voice cry, rats, munch and crunch as much as you wish. And the next moment, splash, I found myself in the river. You could imagine that all the rats declared none of them would ever go to Hamelin. In Hamelin, the people were ringing the church bells so joyfully that all the steeples rocked about the rooftops. The fat old mayor stood beaming in the marketplace, shouting, Now be sure you fill up every rat hole in Hamelin. Don't leave one. But suddenly his beaming face grew long and doleful as a tall, thin fellow in a coat of red and yellow leaped up in front of him as swiftly as a candle flame. It was the Pied Piper. Please pay me my thousand guilders, he said. A thousand guilders, the mayor looked very glum and muttered to the old man, who also looked glum and muttered something in reply. Pay a thousand guilders to a wandering gypsy dressed in red and yellow? Why, a thousand guilders would pay for a splendid banquet for the mayor and alderman. Besides, whispered the mayor, winking at the alderman, those rats are drowned. He can't bring them back. All this time, the Pied Piper waited patiently, fingering his pipe as he stood in the marketplace. The mayor turned to him and said, You know we were only joking when we promised you a thousand guilders. Come now, we'll give you fifty. A dark frown chased the smile from the piper's face. Keep your promise, he said to the mayor. If you cheat, I'll play another tune and you won't like it. The mayor's face turned red with rage. You impudent fellow, he shouted. Go on, blow your pipe till he burst. The mayor and alderman and townspeople of Hamelin stood laughing at the piper as he stepped out of the marketplace. He looked very serious, but he said nothing. He just lifted his pipe to his lips and blew three long, sweet notes, clear as a bird's. The mayor and people stared in wonderment. Then a look of horror came over every face as they watched the piper walk down the street, piping as he stepped, for the street had filled with a rustling, pattering, chattering noise and the sound of dancing feet, happy voices and clapping hands. The children of Hamlin came skipping and running, their wooden shoes clattering on the cobblestones as they followed the Pied Piper. On they ran, talking and singing, little boys with red cheeks and little girls with flaxen curls. But the mayor and alderman and all the grown-ups of Hamlin stood as still as stones and could not speak a word. With beating hearts they watched the children follow the piper through the winding streets away from the town. He did not lead them towards the river, but towards the mountain that rose high and blue over the west wall. The people said to themselves, Oh, the piper can't climb the mountain. He'll stop piping and let the children return. But no, the piper and his procession reached the mountain, and at once a door opened in the mountainside to let the piper and the dancing children pass through. Then the door closed. The piping and the laughter died away. All the children of Hamlin had gone. No, not all. One little lame boy who could not run so fast turned back to Hamlin. His parents ran to meet him, weeping for joy. But the little boy looked sad. He told them that when he first heard the sweet notes of the magic pipe, he heard the music calling children to a lovely country where the flowers had colours never dreamed of in Hamlin, where sparrows had gay feathers like those of the peacocks, and horses flew on wings. 
Nobody in that country was sad or lame or tired. When he grew up, this little boy told his grandchildren how his playmates all went away one day with the Pied Piper and left him behind, and he showed them the windows in one of Hamlin's churches, where, painted in colours on the glass, children followed the Pied Piper in his long coat of red and yellow. And that is that.